Right, so welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to uh, another little uh, podcast with your host, Timin25. That's me, guys. That's me. I'm Timin25, and welcome back uh, to another podcast. Now, first of all, I'd like to apologize if I sound a little bit tired, if I sound a little bit wired. It's all normal. It's because uh, we've started fasting, and I'm a little bit like taken by it and i'm just adapting as i'm going along uh we will talk more about my fasting scenario uh at the end of today's podcast so stick around for that at the end of the show but before that we've got some awesome stuff for you guys to check out that's right we've got awesome things for awesome people uh let me just quickly make sure the browser's working yes it is very good and let's just transition that uh, so yeah, we've got some awesome stories for you guys to check out today. Um, we are uh, guest wise, I have no idea who's joining us as a guest on today's show. I don't know if anyone is going to be here for a guest, but I'm sure you guys will be more than happy to uh, tag along in the comment section, giving your responses to each and every single topic that we're going to jump on today. Uh, so without further ado, we'll jump into this. But first, I want to say a massive shout out to everybody for joining us over at YouTube.com. Big shout out goes out to Dazed Out TV joining us first with the comment and the like and the goddamn uh, view goes to Dazed Out. Well done, Dazed. Well done. You're claiming a new a new title uh, for the first person to ever join my stream over at YouTube.com. And obviously over at Twitch.tv, we've got the infamous Electric Skateboard. As always, they're live. Electric Skateboard, keeping it lit, keeping it live with your boy T4. And not forgetting, uh, we got to do some shout-outs uh, to the sponsors. Obviously, a big shout-out goes out to the guys over uh, Cinch Gaming, CD Keys, and not forgetting the infamous Razor.com. Uh, don't forget, guys, to also be sure to go check out the T4 Army merch. We had brand new merch out, and we had the, the goddamn 15% off. It's run out now, but uh, if you guys didn't take advantage of it, what am I going to do? I can't do much except for... Well, you should have checked it out. Uh, also, uh, not forgetting, we have got uh, the guys over at G2A.com, uh, keeping it lit, keeping it live for us over at Twitch.tv. Uh, and not forgetting G4G and Streamlabs, keeping those donations streamlined and uh, up to date uh, for my pocket. Thank you very much, everybody who's ever donated to the live stream. Um, so, without further ado, we've got some topics for you guys to get involved with. Uh, the first thing that we're going to be talking about today uh, is this thing between KSI and Logan Paul. Uh, I know, I know, it's got a bit tired, it's got a bit, a, a little bit excessive, but they're back in the news uh, again. Uh, also, we're going to be talking about the girl who insulted the whole of the Chinese culture. Um, so that's going to be quite interesting. And also, we're going to be touching on Total Biscuit. If you guys don't know who Total Biscuit is, um, then be sure to uh, check that out. Check him out. He's, uh, quite. I'm not sure if my headphones work or not. Okay, well, that's interesting. I mean, you can always jump in and see what's what. Uh, let me just quickly send him a message. Oh, my God, this is a bit slow over here, isn't it? Um, uh, jump in. Let's try. Uh, right, so anyway, first topic of the day, uh, obviously, uh, is to do with KSI and the infamous Logan Paul. What's up, Holly? Welcome back, young lady. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, over at YouTube.com. Uh, Exodus is going to try and be a guest today. Uh, Exodus, let's see if your if your mic works, first of all. Should we, should we test the mic out? We can try. I'm not sure if it works. Uh, he's saying no. something. Oh, hold on a second. I just realized I've. Uh... Yep, yep, your mic's working, so that's it fine. Is. Can you hear me? I should get it. Yeah. Okay, good. Perfect. I okay, so. Uh... Okay, so we've got Exodus, everybody. Exodus is joining us as a guest today. Welcome, Exodus. Welcome. Um, so anyway, uh, if you guys don't know, we've got some epic uh, little things to talk about today. Uh, first, we're going to kick off with uh, the infamous KSI uh, and Logan Paul. Now, I don't know if you guys know about this, okay? But basically, they had a little bit of a coming together again. 
they had a few little coming together. Uh, um, I'm going to try be a guest as well. Uh, uh, days now, if you want to be a guest, uh, jump into Discord and I'll give you the uh, I'll give you the permission to join as a guest. But you got to get into Discord first before I can give you the permission. So jump in when you're ready. Uh, also, uh, we've got Slow Cool over at Twitch.tv. Uh, welcome back, young man. Thank you for joining us over at Twitch.tv. Uh, anyway, back to the topic. KSI and Logan Paul. Um, so Logan had a little dig at KSI a few weeks ago. Uh, this was on the... When the hell was this? This wasn't that long ago. It was, it was quite recent. About two weeks ago, I think it was. Oh, actually, it was quite a while ago. It was 22 days ago, apparently. But uh, he had a little dig at the infamous KSI, uh, pointing out Target acquired. If you guys don't know... Obviously, KSI has got a pretty big forehead, uh, as it's shown here in the image, that it's not Photoshop. He has got an outrageously big forehead. Um, I know you made me yellow last time I've been on Discord. Okay, cool. Um, and then uh, KSI hit back with uh, with a with a tweet, uh, pointing out Logan Paul's, uh, as you saw in the, in the, in the thumbnail, uh, his. Uh, he goes, uh, at Logan Paul, I mean, <laughs> so pointing out, obviously, Logan is also got a pretty big spam head. Uh, now, this went backwards and forwards. KSI then retweeted another tweet out uh, showing a case of eggs with with Logan Paul's head in one of them like this. So obviously showing him as an egg head as well. Um, but on the serious topic of this, is yes it's all fun and games yes it's all fun and games and, and, and it's all hilarious but they have confirmed they are fighting KSI and Logan Paul are fighting everybody okay this is really gonna happen uh details and dates for venue and more uh so the YouTube superstars are going head to head in a boxing match for the ages and f for the ages and fans everywhere already getting hyped for what will, without a doubt, be the biggest YouTube event of all time. Here's what we know so far. Um, so basically, the, this is the next lineup. Uh, KSI and Logan Paul are going at it. Uh, I've got a little video clip to play for you guys. We'll talk more about the boldness in a little while. Uh, but here is a little intro tribute to the infamous fight that's coming up very, very shortly uh, between KSI and Logan Paul. Turn up your headphones, people. Yo, what's up, your boy? It's out the GWT. How we all doing? Now, now, now. <laughs> now I know there's been a lot, and I repeat, a lot of speculation on me fighting Logan Paul from all angles. This is actually going down. I'm telling you right now, KSI versus Logan Paul, a boxing match is in the work. And then, of course, there's the clip of uh, Logan training. <laughs> And then someone from his fucking team Snapchatting, brilliant idea, Snapchatting the talks between my team and his team. Exciting stuff. We have a time limit on getting the contract in position. Oh, and now says JJ has a video out for his next opponent with a poll that ends in a little as over Yo, three next weeks. Opponent. So obviously this has gone out of control and out of proportion. So I wanted to make a video to clear things up. First of all, it is not confirmed, okay? It's not 100%, okay? Nothing is confirmed. So everyone... Calm the fuck down, okay? Calm the fuck down. Yes, me and Logan are in talk. So I guess my team and his team are in talk. So that doesn't mean it's 100% or it's confirmed. It just means we're talking. That's it. Ultimately, this is the situation. I'm fighting in August. 100% guaranteed. That's something that is 100%. And the fight is going to be in England. Like I said, that is 100%. Nothing will change that. Obviously, the venue will change depending on the person I'm going to be fighting. So if I was fighting Logan Paul, then we'll probably need a massive fuck off venue. And then if I'm fighting 
Adam Sala or Fusi or whoever, then we'll probably just do the couple box again. Obviously, that's just how it is. Logan has a big pull. Like, that's just it. What I can also say that is 100% is by March the 18th, that's when I said voting was going to be closed. You will definitely know who I will be fighting. And then from there, we can work on the undercard. So, obviously, Jake Paul versus my bro would be an insane fight, but Jake Paul is a pussy. So, that's probably not happening. My bro has literally called him out and Jake has <laughs> said nothing. I was actually very surprised. I thought Jake Paul would jump on that 100%, but uh, he's just run away from everything. <laughs> Also, I like how Floyd Mayweather was uh, following Jake. And then someone must have tipped him off and told Floyd that Jake Paul called boxing soft. Because Floyd's unfollowed him now. <laughs> I, I just think that's fucking hilarious. Ah, well played, Floyd. Fuck him. Another fight that I would 100% love to see is Gibb versus either JMX or Joe Weller. So that's just a brief ear overview of what's happening with Logan Paul and KSI's little fight that's actually going to be happening. That Jake and his brother Deji are supposed to be fighting as well. Whether that happens or not, whether that actually materializes or not is another thing. But August 25th in the United Kingdom, they have their first debut fight. And then if depending on how that fight goes, they're going to have a second fight in the United States of America sometime in February next year. How this is going to pan out, whether all this will actually happen, has finally come to pass. It will happen. Contracts have been signed and things are going to be getting dirty. Uh, there, uh, the KSI fight will, uh, KSI had st stated that uh, his next fight will be taking place in England and that the mo has proven to be true. The UK fight will take place 25th of August. In Manchester Arena, big venue. Uh, that's the same venue where he, uh, the likes of Mike Tyson, Amir Khan, and David Hay all have all fought. Uh, KSI had previously revealed that uh, if the Logan Paul fight did not go ahead, then the pair would look to book a larger venue with a capacity bigger than 7,500 seats uh, of East London's Copper Boxer. Uh, where the hosted his last bout against Joe Weller, and we all know how that went down. Uh, so it's confirmed. But back to the subject, boldness, okay? Logan Paul, KSI, talking about boldness. They both have got extremely bad spam heads. But there are some truths to this. There are some serious truths. Uh, a hair loss facts, figures, and statistics. Hair loss in women affects roughly 50%. 40% of men have noticeable hair loss by the age of 35, 65% by 60, and 80% by 80. That's a weird statistic, that by 80% of the time you'd lose hair at 80 years old. Uh, male patron boldness, sorry, male pattern boldness and female pattern, pat pattern hair loss are the most common common conditions um british men are the most likely in europe to worry about balding and also the least likely to do anything about it 60 percent of hair loss sufferers would rather have more hair than money or friends normal hair loss is considered to be 100 hairs per day based on an average scalp containing 100 thousand hair follicles so even if you lose a little bit of hair it's perfectly normal everyone 75 percent of british men believe hair loss cannot be prevented uh and alopecia areta affects one person in every 100 and genetics play a role in one in five cases uh the number of hair loss lost sufferers worldwide seeking professional treatment more than double between 2004 and 2008 from 3,600 no 361,077 to 811,363 Jesus Christ men are more likely than women to look into hair restoration surgery 20% versus 12% there was a 12% rise in the number of surgical hair restoration procedures worldwide between 2006 and 2008 so they are joking around about the boldness about people going bold about the men losing the hair and the women losing their hair they're having a good old little chiff chaff about it but it is a big 
problem. Uh, and the the thing is, the question I really want to pass off to you guys is, in this day and age where we're constantly body shaming, we're constantly uh, debating over whether, you know, we're too fat, we're too skinny, we're, we're, we're too tall, we're too short, uh, we're too pretty, and we're too ugly. Why debate on the hair? Why start with, why, why make even more people who have got hair, obviously I don't have these problems, but for those people who have hair <laughs> issues, okay, whether it's genetic, whether it's fucking, you know, they've, they've, they've done it, it's, it just happens to happen to them, maybe they're the first in the family tree to lose all their hair, why make the shame, bold shame these people, okay, why make them feel any worse than they already feel, so the question really is, should we really be tolerating this kind of terribleness of making people actually feel even worse than what they already feel like. I mean, it's bad enough you go bold. I mean, most people when they're young, they don't even think about losing hair. And then all of a sudden you hit 20 and you start losing hair and then you hit 30 and you're a bold man. So before you know it, you're like 80, but you're really just 30. So, I mean, the thing is, that's the question. So I'll bring in Mr. Exodus D as the prom the guest on today's show. Exodus, do you think they should really be joking? I mean, is it is it is it just a minor joke, or is is there more seriousness to you know body shaming people who are bold? The ironic part is, is that yesterday I was talking about well, not not this exact situation. But I was talking about like balding and stuff in my family with my mom yesterday. And wow! It's just... Im imagine that. Imagine this being the topic, right? Yeah. So, so what did you and your mom talk about then? Um, I was saying because on my dad's side, like my grandpa's like seventy-five or almost, and almost eighty on my dad's side, and he still got like a full head of hair. But my 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 mom's dad, who's about. 65 or 70 is like pretty much bald and my oh, uncle shit. who's about 45 is pretty much bald so i was thinking so your like uncle your, your, your uncle is that from your mom's side is that from your dad's side my mom your mom's side okay right. yeah he's pretty much bald as well pretty much yeah so i, I, and I was just thinking and how, how old is he roughly uh um late 40s or 50s Holy shit! So he's he's bold early, dude. So yeah. I mean, what what do you? I mean, are you starting? Are, are you starting to stress about which gene you're holding in in those cards? <laughs> Honestly, and not I really wasn't thinking about it until yesterday because I was like, wait, your family's like balding, but like my dad's side, it's like everybody <laughs> still has like a full head of hair. <laughs> so do you think it's because i mean has it become a concern for you are you starting to see like your hair starting to thin a little bit or or is it just curiosity yeah that's brought this up yeah just curiosity because i still have like pretty thick hair okay so maybe it's not running maybe you you've you've skipped the gene you know Hopefully. maybe you'll follow your dad's side and you'll have a full <laughs> head of hair just like your boy t4 for the rest of your life <laughs> but the Fingers thing crossed. is I mean, the thing is, right, Exodus, it, it, yeah. the, the, the question is, like, whether you think, like, like, because obviously KSI and Logan Paul are big, big people who, who a lot of people look up to, a lot of people um, pay attention to what, what they have to say, uh, you know, and, and it's just a scary thought that they, they're making a joke out of each other about their, bo their, their, their hairline or maybe their hair's receding or their balding, whatever it would be. Uh, but they're making they're making a fun joke out of that. But yeah. is it just a joke? I mean, will some younger people who look up to these guys be taking things a little bit more serious and maybe like be more conscious of the fact that maybe they they might be suffering with something like that? The younger people will just think it's like jokes and stuff. But like people that are like maybe sixteen or fifteen and above will be like, that's yeah. actually like a serious problem in my family. But like the little kids are like 12 and under will just think like, oh, they're just making jokes. Because I mean, like, it's the same thing with, with, with people whose hair goes gray. Because like, I yeah. know some people who, I know some friends of mine whose hairs, they, they went gray like when they turned 24 or something. And, I, and it was like a bit of a shock because they, they went from being like someone who was predominantly young 
to looking like an old man yeah when they're still in their prime so you know i i mean it's kind of like the same kind of thing right for the most part yeah because like it's all all all, all the stuff people can joke about for the most part is about like body image and stuff and a lot of people like get like anxiety of like people trying to let or like they they think that people will like make fun of them even though like a lot, a lot of times they're like fine but they still get like that little bit of like hesitation to like go out because of the way like their hair or body looks so, yeah because obviously i mean even people like you know people who suffer with people who are a bit overweight or people who you know i mean the thing is is that everybody i think the difficulty is everybody's suffering with something everyone is is dealing with something but because some someone who's a lot more you know has a more following or whatever you know makes a statement like that it kind of then makes it more you know like because then if you're with if if you're with friends and you know you know one of your friends has got a bit of a bowling issue you they could become a target you know because you know they they think it's funny because you know ksi and logan paul did it but that person might actually get affected uh quite quite dramatically by it right for sure just just as easily as someone making fun of a body weight that balding spot could be like a trigger for him to like get like really like he, he, it, it can get him like super sad or like super pissed off at you guys for making fun of that like it's yeah, like a exactly. trigger yeah yeah i mean i mean i mean the thing is the takeaway from me for this is that i think we we need to be i think we do need to be aware we do need to be more conscious of you know what is allowed what is what what we should say and not say especially if we have a, a, a certain position within um the media especially because i think a lot of people will end up like um can take this on from a bad stance you know like uh you know if you're taking the piss out of people who are gay or you're taking the piss out of people who are fat or people who haven't got any hair or whatever it would be there are people out there who will take that serious, you know. I mean, I mean, we we yeah. heard about that. Uh, I mean, just a little while ago, there was, there was that porn star who actually killed herself uh, just because of a tweet that she sent out about something, and everyone reacted uh, negatively to it, and she actually killed herself because of it, uh, which is which shows you how much of an effect that can affect social people, media yeah. can have. Yeah, it can have a massive effect on people. So you know, I I mean, I see the joking side of it. I see the fun side of it. Uh, don't get me wrong but at the same time i think there's a really fine line where um there are people who are going to read into this because you know people who are being affected by the 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 real truths of these things like with boldness i mean the fact that you know 40 percent of men will notice hair loss uh, by the age of 35 i haven't noticed any by the way uh <laughs> but you know they will notice it you know and 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 that's a that's a big number. Forty percent of men. That's that's a high number of people that is. who would be experiencing some sort of hair loss or some sort of hair receding, and and then for them to be making jokes about it, I think uh, would definitely it, it it's not it, it's not the sense of the joke. It's more the sense of then people will become aware of other people who may be bowling or may may look like they're a bit short on top, and then they might start targeting those people, like saying, oh, you know. You, you you fucking losing hair or something, and it might make them feel even worse, uh, because it might be something private that they're trying to deal with, and yeah. um, and this is just making it very very public, I guess. Um, anything you want to add to this uh, subject, Mister Exodus? Do before we move on, just just keep the jokes clean. Don't make fun of body types or anything. Be nice. Be nice. Everybody. Basically, yeah. Just make it like friendly <laughs> jokes. <laughs> Like, uh, right, oh, yeah, so well, I'm gonna question... beat your ass. <laughs> like, you got a I mean, big the... Ass forehead. <laughs> the uh, the question that I pass off to you guys is 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 this just a joke, uh, or would some people actually take this really really seriously? If you guys want to drop your comments uh, down below, be sure to read them while we're live on the live stream. Uh, but uh, also, uh, if you are watching this on playback, please let us know what you're thinking in those comments down below. Uh, moving on swiftly, we come to the next phase. That's right, Utah is on the map, everybody. Utah has become center stage uh, for this little controversy that's happened with this young little girl. Uh, so, my culture is not your prom dress. Uh, Twitter users accused teen of insensitivity after she wore a Chinese kippah. Kippah. I don't know how you said it. Kippah. 
Powell dress uh, to a big dance to the big dance, uh, but she insists she was showing appreciation. Um, so Akiza Dome, I think I said that right, uh, from Utah, shared photos of herself uh, and her friends at her high school prom on Twitter. The 18-year-old can be seen wearing a kipao, a traditional Chinese outfit dating back to the 17th century. In one group shot, Kiza and her female friends pose with their hands clapped palm like this and bowing. Uh, Twitter users Jeremy Lam accused Kiza posting of cultural appropriation. Uh, more joined in to share why they found the dress offensive though others have come to Kiza's defense um so this is a very very interesting story i mean you can see uh from the the image on your screens uh that uh this is her with her prom date and obviously she's wearing this dress uh which is a chinese uh authentic dress uh but is it not just a dress i mean isn't it is it really that is it really um, you know, ethnic appropriation, or you know, is it really going to cause offence to so many people? But it, apparently, this dress caused quite a bit of stir. I mean, she literally she looked beautiful. He looks handsome. Uh, looks like a perfect couple, but it, it didn't quite go down that way. And uh, before we get the the guests into this, uh, we have got a little video to play for you guys. Uh, so please be sure to turn up your headphones and have a little, little listen to this. So this is her in her little dress. Repeats a couple of times. So that dress caused absolute havoc on in the world of uh, of Twitter. Uh, Kiza posted for many of the traditional shots in her kipao, standing with her date and friends. But one shot, she and her female friends can be seen posing with their hands clapped palm to palm bowing while their male friends behind them made inverted v signs uh, with their fingers some have taken a combination of kiza's outfit and the bang as a fence twitter user jeremy lamb appears to have been the first to comment after happening um upon kiza's post he retweeted it with the caption my culture is not your god damn prom dress the picture quickly went viral and others began to accuse the teen of cultural appropriation as well cultural appropriation is defined as the act of taking or using things from a culture that is not your own especially without showing that you understand or respect this culture personally i think this shit's i mean this is the picture that they're talking about with the claps hands the clapped hands and the 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 v signs up and down but the thing is this picture, believe it or not, is actually referring to uh, H3H3 uh, because this is their little, the Vape Nation uh, sign. And uh, and th it was quite ironic that they, that they picked on this. But uh, in a series of subsequent tweets, Jeremy went on to explain that the kippah was originally a loose dress uh, or garment worn by Chinese women to clean the house or to do domestic chores. He added it was then adopted by Asian women as a symbol of activism and fight against paracrawl oppression. Okay. Jeremy also suggested that the dress symbolizes the extreme barriers marginalized people have overcome for it is, for it too simple, simply be subject to American consum consumerism and cater to white audience is parallel to colonial ideology, he said. Uh, personally, I think this dude blew it completely out of proportion. Uh, I, I don't personally see there being such a big hoo-ha about this particular dress. I think she wore it well. Um, she did it justice. Um, and I don't uh, think... I mean, I, as far as... I mean, as far as I know, a dress is a dress. I, I can't see any more than that, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I think, it's, you know, people are free to wear whatever kind of clothes they want to wear. Um, I don't think, you know, you have to be Chinese to wear a Chinese dress. You don't have to be Arab to wear an Arab dress or whatever it would be. It, 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 it literally is for the taking, you know. I mean, anyone, I mean, by someone who isn't Chinese, I would say, wearing this kind of dress, 
it would be showing sort of like their understanding, I would say, and their gratitude to, you know, knowing because all of her friends didn't wear that kind of dress. They wore the standard sort of prom dresses. We do have a picture of them a bit further down. If you look at the, if you look at her her other friends who were with her in the photos, I mean, the guys wore pretty much the same thing, a tux or some sort. But the girls, the other girls, just wore a standard prom dress. And she decided to go out on a limb and do something a little bit different and gets fucking fired on it. So the thing is, I think it's it, the, the question really that I want to pass off to you guys uh, and to uh, my guest today is, is this really um, a cultural appropriation um, or is it just somebody appreciating a different type of dress and deciding to wear that for their prom. Exodus D, what are you? Yeah, think? what up? Um, I think as long as she understands like what the culture is about and stuff, I think it's like completely fine because I because I see like people like out here wear like hula dresses and all that shit all the time. Mm. And like yeah, I've and like I've never seen like a whole like a Hawaiian or Samoan person be like, hey, you can't do that. Like, as long as I understand like what it was like used for or like what the culture is about, then yeah. it should be completely fine. Because yeah, I mean, it is, shows yeah. it shows her understanding and her like her like appreciation for that culture. I mean, just for her to think of of actually wearing this kind of dress, surely it would have it would have um, that that alone should have kind of set the right tone, don't you think? Yeah, like I just I just think she's just trying to like show like appreciation for all the stuff that the Chinese women and stuff had to go through back in the days. I mean, I don't like, I don't just think trying to, like, to go... appreciate. I mean, I don't think someone needs to go to the extent of having to show gratitude to, like, a culture or whatever, you know? I think if you're wearing a dress, I mean, if her friends are wearing, all of them are wearing standard prom dresses, okay, like you could say, okay? It's a standard prom mm-hmm. dress that you go to a shop and you'd buy a prom dress. She decided to go and buy something completely different. Uh, she stands out in the group, you know, and... For someone to stand out in the group, there's only two reasons why you do it. One is because you want to be different, or two, because you want to show something which is different from what everybody else would wear or would recognize as you could wear this to a prom. To a prom. So I guess in that respect, I mean, if the guys all wore, you know, shorts, you know, I mean, it, it, everyone would be like, oh, you know, they're wearing shorts. But, you know, I mean, she's wearing a Chinese dress, but... She just and the thing is, she, it looks like she went out of her way to make sure she she bought a dress which actually was authentic as well. So there was some thought that had gone into this. It wasn't just like yeah. on a whim, you know. It wasn't just born on the whim. So you know, I just think um, I just think this was definitely blown out of proportion. I think you know, uh, and and the, the funny thing is, I mean, the guy who reacted to this, uh, his name is um, I did say his name a minute ago, uh, Jeremy Lam, uh, who's also Chinese. Um, the irony is that his picture on Twitter is of him wearing shorts and not any any kind of shorts, but but surfer style shorts, which are attributed to ma- mainly white Americans. And isn't that cultural appropriation by him wearing those shorts because he's a Chinese guy? I don't know. You know, it might have a flip side. You know, they, they could do a, a, a 180 on that, you know, flip it. Uh, towards him um but i mean the, the real question i really want to pass off to you guys is um you know one is this uh cultural appropriation or two is this just it's just a dress she's showing appreciation by even wearing the dress i mean she knows she's not asian or, or chinese so you know for her to even wear the dress it would have taken some guts to wear it i guess um, and especially the fact that it looked like some thought had gone into buying that dress. Um, so, I mean, really, what do you guys think? I mean, Exodus, is there anything else you want to add to this story? Uh, I just think that everybody's just blowing this whole thing just completely out of proportion, like like you were saying. Mm. Yeah. Lucky guy. She's got a, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a lucky guy. She got a nice butt. 
I want I I I, I I wanted to save it for the end just so it didn't like <laughs> I wanted um, to end sorry, on that just so it wasn't distracting. Anyways. We're gonna end on that, definitely. We're gonna end on that. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna move on. So uh, let me know in the comments down below whether you're watching us live, whether you're watching us on playback. Let us know what you think about this particular topic. Is it is it cultural appropriation or is it just been blown out of proportion? I think she wore the dress pretty well. I think she showed it off well and you know the world is losing their minds. Anyway, moving on swiftly, we come to the next segment, everybody. That's right. Uh, we are coming up to the news of the week. That's right. Uh, news of the week is about this very, very sad story. Uh, if you guys don't know who Total Biscuit is, he is a Twitch streamer. And he's been on Twitch, I think, like forever. I think it's been well over 10 years. Uh, that he's been live on Twitch gaming a, a, a load of games, mainly known for League of Legends. Um, and uh, he this he basically he 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 got cancer, and he was fighting. He got cancer in 2015, and he's been fighting it ever since. And he it it looked like he was doing well, and he was coming out of cancer, and he was going to do a, get a, do a full recovery. But then it hit him like a ton of bricks, like it can do. So, Total Biscuits Cancer Update. YouTuber John Bain, uh, liver, fail liver failing, warns fans, I don't have long left. Um, it's been it's been a very difficult time for Total Biscuit. Uh, if you guys don't know much about him, I would really highly recommend you guys check him out because um, he is a, a little bit of a legend when it comes um, to... Uh, Twitch and and on YouTube uh, because uh, he started off from predominantly on on Twitch and then moved over to YouTube a little bit. Uh, but the video game commentator and internet personality John Bain, also known uh, under the uh, online alias Total Biscuit uh, and the Clinical Brit, uh, has announced his retirement from gaming criticism uh, as the. Uh, chemotherapy treatment he was receiving for terminal cancer is no longer working on his body and his liver is failing uh, the news which caused a swell of support from his fan base and fellow gaming journalists comes roughly a week after his latest hospitalization bain via a statement posted uh, to reddit said that he will continue to stream content online but admitted he was on too much medication to produce detailed coverage. Uh, in 2014, Bain announced that he had been diagnosed with full-blown cancer. He tweeted, Doctors, optimistic, don't make my mistake, get checked. This week, he confirmed that the latest Reddit post would likely be his final health update to fans and that his attention would now turn to pain management and quality of life. Uh, my body has become resistant to all forms uh, of its according to my uh, oncologist. He wrote uh, in the post, 46 chemo treatments, 138 days plugged into a pump. Let nobody ever say I wasn't stubborn. Unfortunately, this was followed up by a couple of days later with some more bad news. My liver is failing and its effectiveness has lowered past the point where the clinical trials I had been offered would take me on. Um so it's it's very very sad. I mean, he he was massive. He was absolutely massive. If you guys, this is who he is. If you don't know uh, what he looks like, uh, I would really, really, really highly recommend uh, you guys go and check him out uh, before his time's up. Really, I mean, uh, some of the streams that he's been doing recently is been from his hospital bed, and as you can imagine, you know, he's in a hospital gown. Um, you know, I mean, th this is like the ultimate sort of legendary moves that you'd see from uh, a youtuber who has got a big fan base he's a very big youtuber uh, well known by a lot of people um and has stuck it through i mean it wasn't the easiest ride for him and he didn't he didn't just blow up like just like that it, it was a lot of hard work involved and i think um you know it's a tribute it's a tribute to someone like him um to kind of work things the way he's done and just continue to push forward even though it's been a very difficult time and, and a difficult sort of um position to be in i mean i can't even imagine what it must be like to 
to know when you're going to die because a lot of people you know the, the, the question is you don't know when you're going to die uh, but for someone like that who's terminally ill and they know you know they know deep down that it's not far away every day is a struggle every day is a constant battle uh, i just i just wish him the 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 i, I just i just wish him a, a painless out I guess, you know, uh, uh, that's the best way I can put it. Because it's not like he's not going to die. He will die. But it's just, uh, let's hope he, he can die with as minimal pain uh, as possible. Um, the question I really have to, uh, uh, that I've got to pass off to you guys is, before I did this podcast, did you go? Did you guys know who uh, Total Biscuit was? And if you didn't, why? Uh, but uh, uh, if you didn't know who he was, um, please be sure... Uh, to go and show him some support, give him a bit of love, uh, because I think uh, when people are in this kind of like dire need, it's really good to go and show um, a little support. You know, tell him the T4 Army sent you there. You know, it will feel good. It will feel good for him because obviously, you know, he knows there was so much more um, that he could have probably done in his life, uh, but um, it's not working out that way. I mean, he's 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 barely. He's barely nearly he's 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 early he's in he's around my age he's about mid thirties um so he's not even that old yet so you know he had he's got a fair time to go before he he was gonna give up youtube for definite um but uh, i mean obviously exodus um did you know about total biscuit very 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 slightly not like a lot but i've seen like maybe one or two of his videos yeah I mean, he's not a he's not a massive uh, YouTuber, but he's well known within the YouTube community because is a lot of the times he reminds me a bit of me, where I'm not a very big YouTuber, but I have a following, and yeah, you know, and and he had to work really hard to get to where I mean, he's big now, but he had to work really hard to get to where he was. It was like a constant head banging against the wall, just constantly grinding that YouTube will and the Twitch streams and just getting himself up there, you know, forcing himself onto that platform, getting people to see him. Um, and he did it. He accomplished it. But uh, to no avail, it looks like, you know, it was destined for failure at one point either way. But, um, I mean, the thing is, the question I have really is... <coughs> terminal illness terminal diseases yep. um they are there and they will shock us they will affect uh, a lot of people in our lives uh, some people may have been affected by them already some people haven't um i mean what's your takeaway from from this kind of stuff i mean he blames the fact that he didn't get checked out when he should have done i mean mm -hmm. do you think there is a, a thing where maybe we should be getting ourselves checked out more 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 earlier uh yeah, I think people should do it like at least like twice a year once they mm. get to like once they get like to like, the mid twenties or maybe even like or even like when you like graduate high school, you should just yeah. get checked like as often as possible just to make sure like your body's running like smoothly and everything. I mean the thing is, I mean there is so much uh, there's there is so much um, sort of hindsight behind all this. Uh, because he blames the fact that he was he got sick, and then they they found out that he had cancer, full blown cancer, um, mm -hmm. from going to hospital. Which he says he put off because he 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 kind of felt like something wasn't right, but he didn't want to find out that there was something wrong. And and I think I guess that's a bit of na naivety. And I think like in this day and age, do you think like Exodus in this day and age, like uh, people are scared to find out? That kind of news yeah people people are scared to find out like major news like you have cancer or some shit for sure but like that's like for me like that's like worst case scenario so like that's like the furthest thing from my mind but like yeah. it's still but but it's still like there in the back of my mind like you know one day i i could get it you know what if that's if I do it early enough, it will be easier to get rid of than if you do it later on. I mean, do you not do you not think it's it's a bit of a? I mean, how can I put it? I mean, say you not you feel you're not feeling yourself. You know, you mm -hmm. feel a bit different. Um, yeah. And your concern 
I mean, would you be confident in going and having yourself checked out? Uh, yeah, I would, it, the second I don't feel like no more anything since I have like a type of disease that, well, not really disease, but like a condition where even like the slightest thing, like e- even like the slightest illness for me can be like major. So like, yeah. as soon as I feel anything wrong, I would make an appointment to see a doctor like as soon as possible. Do you think you're like that because of the the temperament that you're living with? I do, yeah. So do you think those people who don't really visit the hospital or don't visit the doctor very often because they don't really feel get ill that often or whatever, um, they're more in a in a in a predicament where if they do feel weird weird, they think of the worst case. Uh I would I, I would think so, yeah, because like because one day you can be like completely fine and then the next day you just feel like something's absolutely wrong but they'll be like scared to hear news like they have like full blown cancer or like some other like type of like major disease. No, because it must be a big blow. I mean, you know, to anybody it is, if they were to hear for sure. You know, because because I mean that that's like you know, like like I was saying before, like <laughs> No one knows when they're going to die, you know. Yeah. I can't predict when you're going to die. You can't predict when I'm going to die. But when you get told, like, you've got full-blown cancer, I mean, that is, um, that's like, you know, you know, isn't it? That's, like, pretty much deathbed at that point. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. And I think, I mean, this, I think this, yeah, go on. I was going to say, I had a teacher in high school that was, like, the most, like, energetic teacher ever and then one day mm. he was just because he was also the uh the athletic train trainer at our school so he had like a little like card and such different school and and like one day he was just sitting in the field in his cart like looking like something was wrong and then his mm. brother took him to the hospital and he had some sort of fear of like really like rare cancer wow. and like and then yeah pretty much any Pretty much all the way up until his chemo finished, like a year later, like yeah. you can tell he was still like down because like because like he knew that was like because for him like he was he was he, he was like a little bit overweight but like he was still like he would he he would go on walks with his dog for, like an hour and a half every day so he was mm. still like in shape well not not like really in shape but like he was pretty healthy so like he was for active. Him, he was an actor. Yeah. Was active. yeah. And then for him to hear that, that really brought him down. And I've never seen him like, like he was like borderline, like depressed at, after that, uh, all the way up until like the chemo was done and it was like gone. He was yeah. like, after that, he was happy. But during that time, he was like depressed as hell. It must be, a, it must be a very stressful time because you don't know if the treatment's working. You don't know if you're actually going to beat it. And obviously, the older you are, the more less likely you are to beat it. The younger you are, and I guess this is where the kind of like the the lesson is: is that if you don't feel right, if you do feel a bit strange, or you know, just get yourself checked out because if they catch it early, the earlier they catch it, the higher the chance of survival is. You know. Um, because you, when you're young, your body can recover from the chemotherapy, but the older you are, the more of a beating your body will take from that kind of, um, from the chemo. Uh, and yeah. this is a lesson for us to learn from Total Biscuit, I guess, as well. Um, that's all I have for us today, guys. Uh, but before we, we sign off, I have got something very interesting, uh, to talk about. Um... And that is obviously, it's the month of Ramadan. If you don't know what that is, it is a special month uh, for Muslims all around the world. It's when we have to get together and start to fast uh, for about 18 hours of the day in the United Kingdom uh, and uh, a little bit less uh, everywhere else, I think. Um, so I'll give you an example. So today I, I started fasting and uh, I couldn't eat or drink anything from 3.20 this morning, uh, like yesterday morning, uh, till quarter to 9 p.m. this evening. So I so this is why I might seem a little bit not with it. And even like when I stream tomorrow and Sunday, I might not 
be quite with it. I might seem more tired. My, I might not be talking as much. Um, if I am like that, just bear in mind it's because of the fast. It's just it's very very long. It's very hot as well in the UK at the moment. We've got a heat wave on at the moment, um, and not being able to drink during the day or eat anything, it takes its toll. It does catch up with us. Um, so just bear that in mind um, if you're joining us uh, on my live streams or even on the podcast. If I don't seem quite with it or quite as energized as I would normally be, uh, that's basically the reason why. Uh, also, um, it's another thing to talk about is uh, if there is any Muslims that you know, if you meet a Muslim in the street and you're like, hmm, I wonder what I could say to this guy. Instead of calling him a terrorist, uh, why not say Ramadan Mubarak or happy Ramadan he will be absolutely shocked he'll be like how the hell does he know that uh, and then you can tell him about my YouTube channel but before that point you know you can wish him a happy Ramadan also um, there is a chance that I might not stream some days because I might be more tired than other days um, and my day is kind of broken up in into segments um, and working it around work and all that stuff it kind of plays, it, it makes life really quite difficult to live at the moment. So uh, this uh, Ramadan lasts for the whole, of, it's 30 days, so it's one month. Uh, we'll, I think it'll be finishing on the 15th of next month. Um, so, And then I'll be doing the Eid videos that you guys have seen in the past. Uh, for those of you who have been with my channel for a while, you would have seen this come up a few times. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, to send that out. And obviously if you guys have any questions, uh, about fasting, about Ramadan, about anything like that, please uh, drop them in the comments down below. I would love to answer your questions, uh, fascinate you, uh, with what we do, uh, throughout this month. It's going to be, it's quite interesting. Uh, a lot of charities given, we raise a lot of money for a lot of good causes. Um, if you want to support your local, um, muslim center or mosque uh be sure to head down there they'll they're always are looking for people to help them out to get more people in um so please be sure to head down there and 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 see if you can help anybody um and uh we do a lot of uh fundraising for feeding the homeless as well uh so be sure to check out any uh local projects that are going on to feed homeless people uh because you'll probably find a lot of muslims there at the moment trying to help uh, feed a lot of homeless people um but that's pretty much it i mean exodus uh, is there anything you wanted to you wanted to add uh see y'all sunday <laughs> <laughs> see you all on sunday uh so we'll be back tomorrow with the live stream for you guys on uh the ps4 we'll be playing gta 5 tomorrow and there is a brand new game mode on gta 5 uh, I've forgotten what it's bloody called, but uh, it's like it's like a battle royale, really. Uh, uh, they've decided to jump on the bandwagon, looks like. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to be playing that tomorrow on the PS4. Uh, so be sure to join us for that. It should be interesting. I haven't played it yet, so if anyone has played it, let me know what you guys have thought about it so far. Uh, but we'll be on the PS4 tomorrow. It'll be, again, another very, very late live stream. Uh, but the streams are going to be comprised to just one hour, so bear that in mind. Uh, even the podcast is only going to be running for an hour today. We're at 54 minutes currently. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing one hour streams, uh, on Saturday, one hour streams on Sundays. And then if I get a chance to stream anymore, I will, but don't hold me to it. Uh, Thursdays, obviously we do the Fortnite live stream. So I I'm, I'm debating of whether, uh, it will only be an hour long e either way, whether we do it or don't do it. Um, because of the time that I have to actually, um, to actually, cause I can't do this during the fast itself because I can't eat or drink anything. And talking and commentating is the worst thing you could be doing when you're fasting and you can't drink nothing in a heat wave uh but anyway uh i want to say a massive thank you to my guest exodus d for joining us over uh at discord thank you very much exodus once again and the time me thinking that we wouldn't have a guest today but we had one guest turn up uh, and obviously yeah, that's right. And uh, obviously, not forgetting uh, those infamous people over at YouTube.com, uh, Days That TV, and Holly Ebanks. I know this was a very late podcast, so I didn't expect a lot of people to be watching it. Um, I should have called it the Late Show. <laughs> uh, also, <laughs> yeah. over at oh, Twitch.tv. Okay. 
uh, and also over at twitch.tv we had uh, electric skateboard and uh, obviously not forgetting a slow call uh, over at twitch.tv thank you very much for joining us over there um, but I think the rest of you will probably come from watching the, the podcast after probably tomorrow when you wake up you'll be like oh my god Tifa did a podcast yesterday I can't believe he did it so late uh, but be sure to check it out uh, and let me know in the comment section if you have anything you wanted to add to any of the topics today. Uh, and if you have any questions about Ramadan, let me know. Uh, but uh, until next time, guys, as always, stay safe, stay, stay awesome, and, and peace. peace.